All right. Hi, guys. How's everybody? My name is Yael Tamar, and I'm a CMO and partner at SolidBlock. Today, we're talking about property-backed digital securities and how they will transform the property market. I'm so happy and pumped up this morning to talk to you about what keeps me up at night sometimes and what makes me get up in the morning, why this is important, why right now is the best time to actually talk about tokenization and do tokenization, and what I think will happen with this industry in the future. Guys, I'm going to be looking at questions intermittently throughout um, this presentation. So feel free to just uh, you know, type them up in the Q&A or in the chat, and I will be looking at the questions and answering questions throughout. And of course, I will answer the questions afterwards. And I have people submit questions uh, in advance, so I have those questions actually in front of me as well. So let's get started. And thank you so much, guys. I see there's a lot of you. There's over 50 people already, and I'm sure that a lot more will, will join in a bit, you know, because it's just, uh, we're just getting started. So let's go. All right, so I want to talk to you about why the time for tokenization is now. Now, this time of the, of the pandemic, uh, you could say that it creates a lot of misery, right? You see people in, you know, uh, losing jobs and businesses closing up and uh, losing their, you know, their livelihoods. So these times of misery are also times of opportunity for many of the others, right? Anybody who has liquidity right now has an opportunity to invest or buy a business, buy real estate, stock market is booming, you know, buy stocks and so on. So uh, liquidity is king, cash is king at these times. And uh, I want you to remember throughout this presentation that, you know, the misery of, of one sector is the opportunity. Uh, for the other. So, um, and what is important? What is the important takeaway um, that, that we get from that? Um, all right, so another thing that we're noticing is the correction, right? So there are a lot of uh, overvalued assets that are now kind of correcting the, their valuation. There's a lot of um, problem, you know, uh, problematic industries with outdated technologies that are out there and anything that's been outdated is out, right? And people who can't, businesses that can't keep up with remote, uh, you know, tele, telecommuting, uh, you know, tele, teleconferencing or uh, deliveries, you know, supply chains that are inefficient, they're out. So you can see that the technology is king in this type of, uh, of an atmosphere. Now, what we know about real estate is that it's way behind. This is one of the most outdated industries out there and uh, it hasn't been touched much by the technology. Now, let's go back to the opportunity versus misery. What happened to all the businesses um, that had to do with retail and that had to close down? What happened to their customers? Well, everybody flocked to Amazon. That's why Amazon stock is, is really doing well right now. And, uh, you know, it was able to snap up competitors in retail. Look at the supply chain. You know, Amazon is now also the leader in the supply chain space. So um, technology is king, right? So real estate needs to get on with this and just can't continue the way it is in general what is wrong with real estate investing well despite the abundance of crowdfunding uh platforms and the global value value of real estate is huge it's over 200 maybe even 300 uh, uh trillion us dollars only a fifth of these assets are even available for investment so you may want to own a piece of empire state building but you cannot now, the most, um, uh, the most important thing here actually is the liquidity. Only 1% only of, of all real estate assets around the world are liquid, meaning that you know, if you have money somewhere, it's most likely stuck until you have an opportunity to, to take it out. And this 1% is usually public REITs. So these are public companies, right? And as you know, as most of us know, um, public going public requires loads and loads of work and money and is not available for majority of, uh, of uh, real estate um, asset or uh, asset owners or sponsors and also requires a lot of reporting and a lot of scrutiny. Uh, so this is definitely not a viable uh, scheme for most companies. So there was a regulatory breakthrough in retail investing within this, this decade, which was the Jobs Act of 2013. And the regulatory climate has enabled attracting many more investors. How did this happen? Well, number one, you're now able to apply for exemptions 
from the uh, requirement for a prospectus, which is a public company, you can issue your securities um, privately. And you can have tradable securities, pri uh, private securities um, that are tradable, right? So you are able to do that through something that's called Reg D 506C exemption or 506B, and we'll talk about it later in the webinar. And also some other forthcoming regulations, such as uh, A+, which a lot of people are hoping is going to become standard, allowing uh, to raise uh, up to $75 million from retail investors. So I am hoping that this is going to happen within the next year or two, that the market is going to open up for people who are not necessarily accredited or sophisticated investors, but are able to take advantage of these amazing opportunities. You know, um, if if you have spaces like P2P lending or even gambling gambling in a casino available to retail investors, they should definitely be able to invest in real estate backed securities. Uh, obviously, compliant with whatever in a compliant way with whatever regulation. Blockchain. Blockchain is super cool, right? Um, for some of us, for some of us, we're, we're you know we're cautious and we want to learn more. And for some of us, we're just not sure if it stick around. Now, I would like for you guys to write me in the comments what you think is going to happen with blockchain. Is this going to stick around, or is this a trend that will go away, um, or do you think blockchain will prevail in most industries, or do you think it it has its specific use cases? Now, um, for me, it's clear that uh, there's one industry where blockchain is definitely paving the way for completely you know, new type of businesses, asset classes, you know, lots and lots of business models and lots of money. And that is obviously the financial industry. Anything that has to deal with trade, uh, even uh, exchanging funds, uh, exchanging money or buying currencies, um, you know, the only businesses within the blockchain space that really made money in the last three, four years were uh, exchanges and, and financial businesses, payments, and so on, right? So uh, blockchain is definitely here to stay for anything that has to do with trading. So in real estate, blockchain provides transparency, immutability, of course, but most importantly, tradability. You can trade private assets with blockchain, which is major. You don't need to have a third party governing all the transactions, taking money as an intermediary, right? So you can trade peer to peer, you know, within the com regulatory compliance uh, on the blockchain. So this, you can imagine, will create a massive growth trajectory in this market. If now you have less than 1% of real estate tradable, you can see the potential of this 200 trillion dollar market. Now I'm going to stop for a second and I'm going to look at the chat. And hi, good morning, Terry. And so Carla says blockchain will transform all industries. Well, that's certainly our hope. Chuck says blockchain will stick around, but it won't be completely decentralized when governments and banks get involved. True. I've seen that type of narrative uh, in the last month or so coming out of people who said, you know, blockchain is always going to be decentralized and this is a play of the small guys. You know, now they're saying that governments and banks are going to get involved much, much more. And it seems like the truth is in the middle. It seems like the markets are kind of polite. All right. So beyond blockchain, what else do we have here? Well, COVID-19, as we said, changed everything. Asset ownership, rent, sale, and use all are changing at a rapid pace. That's pretty much the gist of it. Look at what happened. Like, who owns your asset? Is it you or is it the bank? Look at all the foreclosures that are happening. Rent. Well, we were told everybody, we're not paying rent this month. There's no way we're going to pay rent. Nobody's paying, you know. Uh, 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 so that's, that's incredible, right? Sale. Well, how do you sell assets? Are you selling them in, you know, in bulk or apartments or buildings or are you selling meters or square feet? Are you selling, you know, future revenues and use, you know, millions of billions of square feet of office space right now is unclaimed and unused. Uh, are, are we going to allow um, to convert this office space to residential as the cities need? And most of the cities need that or what, what's going to happen to that? So the, everything is really changing. Now, my thesis is that any new asset class with more liquid investment structure and data that helps us predict trends and change things you know, at a moment's notice. Today, it's, uh, our office is going to look like this. Tomorrow, it's going to look like that. 
So when you can digitize the property, uh, then you're gonna emerge as a clear winner. Now guys, this, what's happening here right now is a quick intro to an in-depth course. I love, I'd love to do this course. Um, uh, I planned this course for 14 sessions, in fact, uh, to explain tokenization in detail and look at every single aspect of tokenization. Um, you can look at the syllabus. I'll make this presentation available and also will be available on the Cointelligence uh, website. Um, guys, uh, in case um, you didn't notice, um, we, we're doing this in partnership with Cointelligence Academy. Cointelligence is one of my favorite uh, websites you know, that's basically gives all the information in the crypto world or anything on the blockchain world and um, uh, gives credible information about what's legit and what's not, readings and so on, and also a lot of um, practical information about the industry. So I um, am going to share this presentation, but we're also going to have syllabus available on their site and also on the, on the landing page, uh, which is this landing page. Uh, also, we're going to have it on the, on the website, tokenization101.co. Uh, so the, we're going to go in depth into tech, legal, compliance, fundraising, sales, marketing, everything related to tokenization. You're going to be able to get this knowledge um, from, from us, from people who've actually done a project and um, uh, are experts in, in the field. You're going to get this practical knowledge from this course. So um, after this webinar, it's time to go and register for the, for the full course. Uh, we're also uh, cooperating with an organization called Fibre, which is a global blockchain and real estate organization of over 3,000 professionals, of which I am a co-chair of Fibre Israel. And our goal is to bring this knowledge to um, professionals in the real estate and blockchain industries as well. Um, let me see what else you guys are writing me here. That's really interesting. That's the most interesting part communication. And on is saying they, there are and there will be more decentralized blockchains, and there will be non decentralized blockchains for different reasons projects. And on is the founder of Cointelligence. So if anybody knows about this stuff, that will be him. All right, let's talk about the three D's that are changing the face of real estate. We already kind of touched upon the data, which governs every decision in most other industries. So why not real estate? You know, there's a variety of data available from the markets, from the asset itself, and from the industry. Demographics, like this one I'm going to touch on a little, a little more further down the road. But you see that, that millennials, for example, are not behaving the same way as the previous generation when it comes to renting and buying property. Um, and also um, whoever is using all this office, office space or rental or residential space or even uh, industrial space uh, is going to change, right? So, uh, and finally, the most interesting one here is the disruptive technologies of which I would like to single out blockchain and AI. There's of course IoT and green energy and everything relating to, to the real estate space. Uh, our forte is, is blockchain um, and AI, and we're looking into uh, ways to make it easier for people to um, to invest in properties, to manage uh, their investments in properties, and to receive as much information as possible so that they can make informed decisions of, on when to invest, when to get out, and so on. So that's the three Ds, right? And, and then um, all these changes are blur blurring the boundaries of real estate as we talked. Like we don't even, sometimes we can't even tell what's real estate <laughs> because you have business models, you know, uh, for example, you have Airbnb, that seems to be a software company, but it's, it's greatly embedded in real estate, right? People started buying apartments, relying on Airbnb as their source of income, right? And you have Notel, which is a flexible office space that we, we had a, a webinar with uh, last month. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're also a different type of company, very much based in real estate, but you know, uh, uh, that's why you see companies across industries, right? It's for us, it's real estate, blockchain, fintech. You know, for others could be real estate and AI and SaaS. So um, boundaries of real estate are blurred and definitions and roles within the industry as well. 
Now, what are the three Ds introduced via tokenization? And we'll discuss in depth what tokenization is in a minute, but for the purpose of this slide, tokenization is the ability of um, to buy and sell real estate in fractions. Now, um, when you can buy and sell real estate in fractions, in, in, instead, of, instead of buying and selling real estate um, you know, buy units like apartments or maybe even buildings, you know, when you, when you want to raise funds for an office building, then you're likely uh, sourcing it from uh, insurance companies or, you know, some sort of funds that will come and put a big chunk of money. When you are uh, able to buy in much smaller chunks of fractions, maybe $10,000, $20,000 at a time, you are able to diversify your investment. So if you have, let's say, $100,000, instead of buying investing in one property you can technically um, possibly invest in five so that's on the side of the investor on the side of the developer it allows them to diversify their sources of income and their sources of capital right so um, that's diversification now everything you do in your business whether you're real estate or a startup or uh, whether you're an established company any next step that you take, when you make a decision on what to do next, you usually base your decision on how if this is going to de-risk my current situation, right? So um, basically tokenization is lowering the risks that uh, the property is not gonna get funded or that the property is, is going to fail because of, of lack of capital and other and other situations right so we're also using the data that from the financial history of each asset we're using the data from the market to de-risk the property now let me see somebody has a comment um so michal is saying with a distrust in the mortgage markets how do you see digitization trends going forward will the legacy players ever embrace the idea or, or they will get entrenched in the old ways as they navigate the coming months. So the mortgage market, right? When we look at, uh, let's say, uh, uh, lenders, they are usually financing up to a certain point, right? 60, 70, 80%. Um, and what we're usually providing as you know, tokenization platforms is the remaining uh, part, which is the equity. So um, we are able to work with lenders on, on any of these specific projects. Now, I know that you know, this is a very new industry and some banks may have an issue with this type of a financing model. And uh, I really hope that they will get, uh, and I think that they will actually embrace this idea very soon because uh, uh, right now money is, kind of, they need money from, any every single direction right my money coming from from every single direction and tokenization will allow influx of capital from sources that you know have have not entered this market before or um, because of the lack of uh, access to projects uh, these investors uh, have not been able to put their money in these projects so and in terms of the distress in the mortgage markets and there may be on an unavailability of mortgage or some uh, players especially if they um, especially if they are uh, in, in the alternative space, this is creating even more opportunities for tokenization as we will be able to provide uh, financing to those, right, um, uh, in, in, in the place of the banks. All right, so next is digitization, digital asset issuance and trade. That's the third D uh, introduced via tokenization. Why is, why is making, uh, why is putting real estate in the digital space and uh, enabling users to access it and to buy it digitally, to hold it digitally, to trade it digitally. That has to do with uh, the demographic changes and also this quest for liquidity, this thirst for, for, uh, for ability to, to buy and sell whenever you please, whenever you need. Now, I want to touch a little bit as an example um, upon the demographics. It's an example of how demographics is changing the realm of real estate. So uh, even before, let's, before the pandemic, um, in the millennial space, one in three people own a home, which is much, much lower than the previous generation, right? And um, why is this happening? Um, because they, they, uh, they're, buying, they're buying these homes and then are realizing there's so many other uh, 
um, expenses and that they have to put in the home that they hold. And so even after even they bought a home, they regret doing so. Um, and of course, baby boomers and Gen Xers do not. And it, the same thing happening, you know, uh, in the UK, across the pond, uh, even more, you know, uh, and they simply can't afford it. So what is the developer going to do with this trend? You know, if you have a business model in which you're buying a residential real estate and you need to sell apartments and nobody's buying, you know, how do you uh, market yourself? So uh, our um, a premise of tokenization for, for this market would be fractional investment. Enable people to buy smaller fractions of, of these uh, real estate assets, uh, simplify transactions. You know, they don't want to go to get a mortgage necessarily and have lengthy conversations with banks, uh, get all the paperwork and, and so on. They don't want to, um, to have to uh, deal with titles and things like that. Make it as simple as swiping left to right or, or going to get something on Amazon. And finally, I need to create a secondary market. Absolutely, because you should have a lot of opportunities for people to change, for assets to change hands, not only uh, not, not only at the beginning, let's say, when the asset is being built, and then at the end, but also throughout the whole duration uh, of, of the development and the life cycle of the assets. So for that, we need secondary market. When you look at stocks and look at the uh, stock market and, and how over 50% of Americans are engaged in the stock market trade, imagine that you would, you would be able to only invest in a stock like Amazon. The very initial stage, you know, nobody has heard about Amazon and uh, on, only select few in the Silicon Valley and put your money in and then you know uh, you have some sort of a life cycle you know you give them a 10-year bond or if it's even a five-year bond and you say you're going to be able to get out in five years um, and nobody else can buy in so that that type of uh, situation is unfeasible right for the public market and this you know and there's no reason why it should be like that in the real estate and we'll get into that in a little bit again now let me see i have some comments and and q and a's in fact all right, so April Moss says blockchain is here to stay. I agree with you, April. And uh, Amrick is asking about the source of the 1%, and I will email you and give that to you later. Um, let's see. I, I, all right, so in the chat, I have Asaf Ben Or saying, interesting talk, Yael. Thank you so much, Asaf. And more important, Nick is saying, what is the difference between crowdfunding and your company? Um, so I was not going to talk too much about SolidBlock, but uh, SolidBlock is an issuance and trading platform for fractional real estate. And we do that within whatever regulation is available. In fact, the first step for uh, tokenization is establishing a regulatory strategy for a product. It depends on how much money you need to raise, depends on where you think the demand will come from, from which jurisdiction, from which company, and from which countries. Because with tokenization, uh, you're allowed to market global properties, obviously within the regulatory constraints, right? So uh, I'll give you an example. If you have a $15 million project in the United States, um, and you want to market it in US, in Europe, and let's say Singapore, you need to uh, comply with regulations in the US, for $50 million, crowdfunding is not available to you because crowdfunding in the U.S. is up to um, $1 million and you need to have certain licenses here. Uh, it's much easier to do Reg D5060, which creates an offering for accredited investors only. If you want to market in Europe, you have similar regulation in Europe for accredited investors only. And um, in Singapore, you can do uh, also uh, a similar type of offering. Now, there, there are some countries in Europe, actually in all of Europe, you can crowdfund up to 5 uh, million euro, and in some countries in Europe up to 8 million euro. But for that, you again have to have specific uh, approvals and licenses, and there is a minimum, there is a maximum amount that each investor can invest. If I'm not mistaken, it's 5,000 euros per project per, um, per year. So you're limited with crowdfunding, severely limited, and in the amounts and also in, in, in the way it operates. Um, so 
uh, we are uh, able to work with whatever regulation is available. You know, we can even work with public uh, companies, uh, crowdfunding, Reg D, credit investors, um, and we're providing the tech infrastructure for you to be able to issue your securities to whoever is the best audience for them. Um, all right, so what are the challenges in the real estate market? Sorry. And those are number one, intensive capital requirement for entry. You need a lot of money to buy an apartment as a down payment. You need a lot of money to, um, you need even much more money to invest in commercial real estate. You know, these syndicated deals, they have a minimum because they don't want to deal with you. It's, it's costly to deal with every single investor who comes in because you have to market to them, you have to talk to them, you have to report, you have to collect money, and it's, it's an operation, it's an operation. Uh, lack of access to good qualified deals. Well, that was the reason why I wanted to, uh, to join Solid Block and to you know, solve this problem. I, as an investor, as a beginner real estate investor, was not able to uh, get into deals that I, I wanted, you know, interesting commercial real estate deals. So that's something that you can provide because now uh, we are democratizing access to real estate. And finally, and the most importantly for me is capital is locked for long haul periods. And like I said, you know, once you start trading stocks and it's, it's um, uh, unbelievable that there are still industries uh, that are, um, that are uh, requiring you to put money in and, and keep it there for, for forever. So once you have a way to sell your shares, well, sorry, not forever, but for some, for some period of time, once you're able to sell the shares and to sell, to sell your securities, uh, you feel a lot more comfortable jumping in the project. That's for sure. So what are the solutions? Number one, direct investment in the assets, lowers capital requirements. Um, you can invest at uh, 10, 20, $50,000, depending on the project size. Uh, blockchain forced reporting and compliance. So um, there's embedded compliance in, in these blockchain platforms, right? So um, because there is so much regulatory scrutiny, we're only going to see a high quality deals because you have to write these legal documents and a near prospectus, right? There is a document called uh, private placement memorandum. Um, which is a little bit short of a prospectus, but it still has all of the required information and business models and so on. Uh, a lot of lawyers, a lot of uh, tax advisors and accountants look at every project, usually undergoes a due diligence before uh, going on this journey. Uh, compliance is embedded, meaning that there is no way anybody can invest unless they pass KYC and AML some cases accreditation. Also, there is no way anybody can buy it in the secondary market unless they again pass KYC and AML um, and accreditation. And also, um, uh, the platforms like SolidBlock are set up to block the transaction if it does not uh, fit with, uh, with a certain compliance scheme. For example, if you can only uh, have uh, 499 investors in your offering, you cannot sell it to the person five, number 500, right? The transaction will be blocked. And finally, tradable asset infrastructure to enable liquidity, right? So blockchain allows people to trade their private holdings, these fractions of real estate. This can happen in other markets, like, like private equity, for example, you know, startups. Uh, you, you potentially can tokenize a startup and trade the fractions of that startup. Uh, however, I, I think real estate is a much more interesting market for tokenization uh, because there are some enforced and standard procedures for valuation of real estate. So, um, we, so the initial value at issuance is not going to exceed um, you know, uh, the market value, right? So that we, we will see the increase uh, in the increase in the value of the asset over time. And that's what creates trade. All right, so let's jump actually into the tokenization. Um, what is tokenization, right? It's an emerging trend representing convergence of real estate investing and blockchain technology. It helps asset or fund owners raise capital more efficiently and gives investors access to private real estate investments, right? Transparency and liquidity. So those are the things that the investors 
want. Investors are tired of having their money sitting in one project over time. So what does it really mean to tokenize a real estate project? So it means to, to securitize and digitize. That's a tokenization. That's the new word and that's what it means. Uh, securitizing just means dividing an asset into shares that you can sell to investors. These are securities and they, are, they need to be compliant with the regulation in the US by the SEC and whatever regulatory bodies in, uh, abroad. These regulations usually are, uh, are required uh, per country uh, of investor residence. So if somebody is American, but most of the year they reside in Malta, and they will, uh, so when you sell these um, securities to such an investor, most likely you're going to have to uh, comply with the European regulations, right? Or any, any special regulations they might have in Malta. Digitize, securitize and digitize. So first you securitize, you don't have to securitize digitally, right? You just go through a compliance process, tell the financial authority, I'm going to issue these securities. So thank you very much. You can come, you can, you know, look into what we're doing. We're doing everything according to the regulations. So we're, we're starting to sell. At which point you can go ahead and sell, uh, sending a PDF type of uh, notification to your investors, right? So you uh, send me, wire me $50,000, wire me $100,000. Here is your ownership. That's one way. And that's the way that's been done, that that's, it's been done for, for the last uh, several decades, right? Um, but that we, like I said, technology is here to help us digitize. Digitize means to issue these securities on the blockchain. So we actually, instead of, uh, instead of just tracing ownership via Excel and PDF, or in some cases, some more advanced databases, we are using blockchain and placing every single ownership as a token, which is a blockchain, um, blockchain unit and blockchain program that embeds in itself all the information about the owners and it's immutable. So the owners are uh, basically, uh, the owners have these securities. These securities, if, if it's done on a public blockchain like Ethereum, can actually see these tokens, these smart contracts uh, online on a, uh, on, the, on, the, on the kind of a, uh, Ethereum Explorer, right? It's called Etherscan. You can actually go there and see every single token and how much an investor bought. Of course, the investor's information is anonymized and private. Uh, but every time uh, this investor sells uh, part of their tokens or all of their tokens to someone else, you can see this transaction again on a public blockchain. So you kind of get this transactional history, which I think is an important indicator of the industry and an important indicator of the specific asset, how interesting the asset is to investors. What is the demand um, you know, for, for the assets um, and uh, how it's traded? And finally, digital securities are also called security tokens. So those are those two terms are interchangeable. I think there are some comments here, and I would like to see them. So, all right. Um, somebody called Info Support is asking, how sophisticated is the real estate? fractionalization markets compared to the stock market. So we're we seeing limit order and algorithmic trading yet. I wish that's exactly what I think will happen. And that's what we're building in solid block right now. We're building tools for traders and for institutions to be able to actually use the algorithms to predict what's going to happen with certain assets. And that's number, number one. Number two thing that needs to happen before this market will wake up and have this certain, um, uh, sophistication as the stock market is of course a lot of assets you know the stock market has assets from all more all all countries all walks of life all industries you know huge companies um, smaller companies uh, that, that went public and uh, until we see a lot of assets in, in real estate that we could create um, benchmarks we could create funds you can create uh, we can you know create indexes uh, we're not going to see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, trading going on, but my estimate is that this will happen in the next three to five years. And thank you for this question. I'm waiting for that to happen uh, as much as everybody. So tokens are secured, like I said, through the immutability of blockchain and are tradable via crypto exchanges or ATS, which is Alternative Trading System, 
which uh, are companies in the United States with a special license that are able to trade security tokens um, or digital securities. Now, uh, in Europe and other places of the world, you have alternatives to the ATS. Unfortunately, in my home country of Israel, we do not. But Talent Block is hoping to change that and, and lead the change in the regulation so that we could have secondary market trading for private assets here as well. All right, tokenization process and benefits. All right, so we, as we said, tokenization is basically taking the rights to an asset, converting it to a token that you can trade. However, your rights to dividends remain, and you know these platforms, platforms like SolidBlock, uh, we're basically allowing for the dividends automatic to automatically be distributed to your bank account, to your wallet, to whatever payment method you have indicated, and you are able to. Uh, to uh, see all the reporting, all the all the data on the website, and 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 also see how asset is how the asset is doing, right? Anticipated dividends, uh, how much income you're gonna get, when you're gonna get it, and so on. So rights to an asset converted to digital tokens, which can be traded. Uh, remember that also rights to an asset could be interest, right? We could have a debt token and an equity token so with a debt token you usually uh, would, will receive uh, quarterly or, or annual interest and you will also receive possibly some sort of an upside when the asset is sold and with an equity token you know you're owning a piece a fraction of this real estate which means that you are entitled to the proceeds when the asset is uh, when the asset is sold uh, let me look at the chat um, is SolidBlock a regulated entity asked by Stuart Calvi? So we are working with regulated entities that are um, providing um, licenses uh, as needed, you know, either uh, escrow or, or broker dealers or custodians or KYC AML. All of that is covered by uh, covered within SolidBlock. Um, when we do uh, offerings, uh, we have to apply for regulatory compliance or rather notify the authorities of, of the new offering that we do. And that covers us, um, that covers the asset, that covers us um, in terms of regulatory compliance and in terms of any sort of a financial um, uh, activity on our platform, such as a money changing hands, right, investment passing through, we're doing that through authorized third parties, right? So we're not a, uh, a regulated payment company, for example. So we are using uh, um, payment companies that are that have the highest levels of security, bank levels of security, and are standard within our industry. So, so that we make sure that every single piece of compliance and security is covered. Let's see, what else? Um, Ryan Simmons. With a property, how do you split out the debt and equity components? Um, so you would you could actually have um, a hybrid model, debt and equity, uh, but usually what we see is debt tokens or equity tokens, right? So you can offer investors, let's say that you are building a hotel and uh, you uh, want to offer investors uh, a piece of equity, right? You think that they will enjoy uh, the fact of ownership of a hotel in Paris, for example, right? Or they could enjoy owning a piece of residential property in Paris, for example. So you will offer them equity, so they will uh, likely get some sort of a dividend. It really depends on the market. So you need to create a product that people will um, uh, that people will want to buy, right? So you have to look at how much uh, they would. Uh, that they would how much income they would expect to get when buying property in Paris and uh, then you would um, use either equity or debt models depending on that so when would you when would you use debt uh, a lot of times we're dealing with funds which are discretionary um, funds to to buy um, to buy new properties especially at the times like this when property prices are low so they would uh, choose to buy an undervalued property and then they would um, uh, they would flip and provide the income to their investors so in these situations a lot of times what we see is kind of a fixed income bond 
um, where you would offer a certain percentage annually to investors with a possible upside every year, you know, kind of splitting profits between the fund and, and the investors. So in that case, you'd likely use a debt token. Another type of consideration that you would do is actually taxation. And in Europe, taxation seems to be um, more uh, forthcoming and better for the debt products. Um, so although you could probably structure it differently, and, and I just want to remind everybody, this uh, webinar is no way solicitation. And, and, and also, I'm not a financial advisor, so take Anything that we say here, um, you know, uh, with a grain of salt and go to your own investment and taxation advisors before investing in anything, including security tokens. Um, so now that that's out of the way, I have another question here. What do you, from Rubens, um, what, do you, what do you think is the biggest challenge we have for real estate organization to become an investment process accessible to small investors? And how long do you believe this, can, uh, this will take? So um, right now you can invest if you are a small or individual but accredited investor, you have um, access to pretty much anything, right? Um, you, can, you can invest in uh, any asset that is being tokenized and, and they range from huge funds uh, to, you know, AAA uh, buildings and uh, hotels and, and, you know, just very, very interesting properties. Uh, as a retail investor, your choice right now of tokenized properties is very limited um, because, you know, this space is right now pretty much dominated also by crowdfunding uh, companies and they're fantastic and, and we love them. You can go on the website and, and buy properties. However, that uh, what we see there, the type of properties we see there are mainly, uh, you know, smaller and residential properties, which right now, by the way, are doing really, really well. Um, in, in this climate. So, but if you want to do digital investment on the blockchain, then uh, let's hope that the regulation is going to allow us soon to use uh, Rigi Plus in a much easier and, and more accessible way in the United States. And we personally at SolidBlock, we are actually working, um, working on that with, uh, with the Digital Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I, I invite you guys to check it out. It's, it's a, a lobby organization that's working with politicians in the, in, in the United States. And um, we're also, uh, every single time that we can incorporate crowdfunding within our models, then we're striving to do so. Uh, and how long? I, I, I really don't know. I think that within five to 10 years, we're gonna see a lot of um, market opening up. Also, the United States is reconsidering the term of, um, the term uh, accredited investor. They're likely to open uh, securities uh, investing to sophisticated individuals that may not um, reach the level of accredited investors, which in the US um, you know, goes up to, I think, $250,000 a year in income um, and a certain level of asset ownership that, that they, would, they would have to adhere, but rather somebody who understands the capital markets, understands the investments that are uh, being put in front of them, and, um, and uh, maybe worked for a company in the financial space. So I hope that that will happen, and that will definitely change the face of this market. Okay, let's see. Ralph Kelsey is asking, do you guys offer a white label solution? Also, what is the underlying blockchain protocol used for this platform? SolidBlock is using Ethereum uh, ERC20 modified ERC20 token, and we are offering white label. What exactly do you tokenize? Ask, is asking Andrew Powell. The dematerialized title deed to the property held by the jurisdictional and registry or future cash flows. Fantastic question. Andrew. In Asia, for example, it is very hard to definitely prove title. <laughs> for example, a hotel in Bali as an eat, pray, love. Uh, I have not seen and I refuse to read the book, but I have been to Bali. It's one of my favorite places to dive. Um, so tokenization, by the way, I went there to speak at a conference, which was really fun. So tokenization is done on an SPV that you establish. And the SPV uh, has the um, basically, uh, the owner has uh, the ownership of the project, and is so you are technically entitled uh, to the proceeds. So you, we are we are tokenizing the assets, but the uh, 
uh, rights are to the future cash flows as established in the initial contract. It could be uh, interest, it could be um, upside from the project. So that's what you are receiving. And in terms of the title, um, in fact, tokenization requires uh, a string of a due diligence process. And one of them is, uh, well, not the tokenization, but platforms like SolidBlock uh, uh, are definitely involved in, in the due diligence process, and one of which would be title, right? We would have to uh, look at a title and make sure that the, uh, that the general partnership that owns the SPV owns the title. So that's one of the requirements. If you cannot prove the title ownership, then you cannot tokenize the project. However, however, this is the important part. Um, with tokenization, you avoid um, splitting the title ownership or, or, or having the title change hands. So that's also revolutionary because uh, you don't have to buy and sell securities. Um, you know, uh, uh, you, well, you don't have to change anything in the title when you buy and sell securities. So that can be much faster and much more efficient. And while the, while the title is held by the general partnership. All right, there are some more questions here. In fact, Yael, do you have from Stefan, Oana, do you have examples of real estate projects that are already using issued such tokens in Europe? In fact, there are quite a few, and I've seen quite a few in the UK and in Germany. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to send me an email and I will be happy to uh, send you a few examples. Now, uh, Jose is saying, uh, we will launch an STO for an apartment in Barcelona in two months, totally complying with Spanish laws. And right on, I remember our meeting, Jose, and I am rooting for you guys to get that done. I know that you've been building this uh, for a while. Uh, Damir, what are the reasons large real estate funds have not started to use tokenization to increase the liquidity of their portfolio? Who said that they haven't? In fact, there are quite a few funds that have started doing that, and we've seen that, we've seen those examples mainly in the United States, but you're right, not enough funds have started to do that. And I think just because they're waiting to see what's going to happen in this market. But next year, it's all going to change. And now it's all going to change when the market starts waking up. So we got another 12 minutes. So I'm going to try to run through the slides and answer all your questions guys um i'm gonna again i'm going to uh have this presentation available oh i just saw one more question ken reinhardt when do you think tokenization will become available to non-qualified qualified investors and i have answered that i hope very very soon and the issuers actually have a way to make it available by also creating crowdfunding compliance and not a lot are doing that because it's costly and it and it also it's hard to advertise to retail investors just very expensive now eric sanchez hi eric i'm supposed to talk to you later today or tomorrow um if you avoid to change the title owner do you avoid the taxes ha huh, absolutely not uh however the taxation um well and taxes involved in the sale process no um, so the taxation is done here on two levels. On the one level, of course, the general partnership, when you sell the asset, you're going to have to deal with the taxation involved. And of course, that will cut into the profit received by everybody, by all the investors as well. However, when you buy securities, you know, uh, or sell securities, you are, of course, responsible for paying the taxes. And in most cases, that would be uh, just a... Uh, just the taxation involved in the sale of securities, uh, capital gains, 10% or something along those lines. So your taxation as a real estate owner in this specific tokenization case are su is, is much, much easier than if you were right now to buy an apartment, sell an apartment, you know, in many countries like Israel, for example, when you own several uh, pieces of real estate, several apartments, you have to pay much more taxes than if you just have one as a, let's say a homeowner. And uh, so your taxation is definitely much more simplified, but you cannot, of course, avoid taxes in any way, shape, or form. Um, is this the right time, asking Manoj, uh, to do STL hotel project in India, or should we wait? So I'm looking at the public market right now, and uh, the hotel stocks are all down. 
So in, in, in some cases, so, you know, people are investing in, in hotels because uh, they know that they can do that at a discount. Uh, however, the big question here is if you uh, can manage your business plan, right? If you can manage your business plan with the cost of building of your hotel, because when you're building a hotel now, you're waiting, you know, for two, three years until it's operational, right? And the market is um, uh, probably going to bounce back, right? So, uh, however, are people going to invest right now in, in a hotel? That's a big question. I think they will be. They will be. And we have some hotel projects that I think are fantastic. And I think people are going to invest. Um, they need to feel like they're getting a really good deal. All right. Uh, data securities provide efficient fundraising process, built-in compliance, regulatory visibility. We talked about all of this, right? And programmable incentives. What are programmable incentives? Well, you can tell these, um, let's say you're building a hotel in India, you can tell the, the, the investors that they're going to be able to enjoy maybe using the facilities in the future, or they're going to be able to reach certain levels of dividend if they, if they you know, keep the security for a certain period of time. So you can program all of that. Automatic dividends, and of course, easily transferable. Right? So we talked about the benefits of security token offerings, which is global regulation, digital process, very transparent, you can even see the investment uh, and the transactional history on public blockchain and easily transferable. Now, um, there's some additional benefits of offering liquidity, which we have not discussed. Um, number one is making the asset more attractive, right? Why are some, some uh, owners tokenizing the projects? Well, you are offering a liquid asset, which is more attractive, right? An asset that's more secure, that's on the blockchain, that is providing automatic dividends, compliance, and so on. It's a more attractive asset. Asset is actually more valuable. Uh, when you place this asset on the blockchain, you are creating a liquid offering, so which is on par with cash, which you can actually list uh, as a part of your cash assets on your cash flow. So there are some accounting benefits to tokenization. Finally, your investor reach is much bigger. You're attracting global investment. So let me look for a second. A, a question in the chat. Um, okay, I think I probably answered all of them. All right, um, creating a new real estate token. So when an asset owner decides to tokenize a property, you create, we create uh, ERC-20 security token or alternative to represent the shares of the property. Now the total value of all tokens is equivalent to the total value of the securitized asset. So you don't have to tokenize all of your assets. You can tokenize a part, which actually we did at Solid Block when we tokenized the St. Regis Hotel, uh, the Marriott property. I'm actually gonna, gonna skip to that slide. When we tokenized the St. Regis property, we um, actually, okay, so um, the property actually needed to get renovated and it needed to, uh, it needed about $100 million and it had received most of it as a loan from the bank and they still needed to raise equity which was 18 million dollars so they turned to uh solid blocks platform to raise that in the form of a security token so and that's what we what they did they tokenized 19.14 percent of equity so they uh so uh that is um now that 19.14 percent at the time of issuance was worth 18 million dollars now of course the worth <laughs> there the worth of these tokens are now much higher because the renovation has been complete and not only that uh, we know that the dividends that were promised to investors at that time uh, have been much more significant now guys i have five minutes left so i'm not going to run through all of the tokenization processing here today uh, but like i said i will send the presentation and we're going to um we're going to go through this in the, throughout the duration of the course, which is 14 sessions, 14 hours. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this slide, which I love. It basically shows you the strength of tokenization. Now, um, what is a token really? The token is this scheme over here. You have on, on the left side, you have 
legal tax regulation, appraisal KYC, all of that data is embedded in one token. So all of the PPM, the private place memorandum, and, and the, is basically embedded in that token. All, that, all of that information is in the smart contract, um, which is held by the investors or by the custodians that hold it on their behalf. Right. Um, and uh, uh, and also the, the asset in the SPV that is responsible for dividend distribution and making decisions how to manage the property and then when to buy, when to sell the property or keep renting the property and uh, and then distribute the income. So then you have also uh, third parties that that manage the distribution of that income. Now, another slide that I absolutely love that I think kind of shows you why this is such a cool market, right? Why is this such a cool market? It's because you can see on this graph, you can invest at any stage of the project, whereas normally the investors are able to invest way in the beginning and sometime in the end when you start renting or, or selling. Now here you see that along the way, you can buy or you can sell. The buying and selling is fluctuating, but it's not fluctuating too much because the investors normally know how much similar assets are worth in the market. However, they might believe that the asset is undervalued because of some major market changes happening or new assets coming to light or to life in that area or because of the regulation on that specific uh, asset class. So they will buy this, um, they, they will buy uh, the assets at, at a you know uh, at a certain price. On the other hand, when somebody really needs to liquidate and they, because they need the cash or they they found something else that's way cooler that they they think will will make them more income at that stage, they will sell. Which you can see maybe sold uh, a little bit below the line. Like we we'll, we estimate that this fluctuation is not going to be more than twenty and thirty percent in rare cases, right? So, um, however. Think about this. Let's say that there are several assets in the platform and you invested in asset number one. Now you held that asset for about six months to a year when, and when you thought, okay, they, they realize, you know, I like this level of risk, the beginning uh, of the project. I want to liquidate now and I want to buy another asset that's at the same level of risk instead of waiting for this asset to mature. And that creates opportunities, you know, and for, 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 for me to to exit maybe bring another investor uh in my place right they will buy my shares and i will invest my money with another project that creates much more money in the market for these projects all right so i think i will stop here in terms of um tokenization i'll, I'll look in for a second uh, at, a, at some questions here so i can finish on time. I love starting on time. I love finishing on time. That's one of the things about me. Uh, the future of this is a 228 trillion market, right? Uh, so the future is vast, right? So we're, um, we are ready to start tokenizing and uh, you guys hopefully are ready as well. So talk to us and we'll happily uh, help you guys navigate this industry. All right, Evan Evangelos is asking. Evangelos is asking, are you concerned that the level of liquidity we're anticipating with introduction of digital tokens will correlate an otherwise uncorrelated asset class to the public markets? That's introducing extreme volatility. Amazing question. I happen to have a blog about this, and I say no. Why do I say no? Well, a lot of people associate the stability of the real estate market with the lack of liquidity. In the market which i think is wrong because when you talk about equity um there's so many things in the market that 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 show you that that show you the cost right of something right in the during the time of the pandemic uh some companies are doomed and that's why they're doing really really poorly you know anything that in the service industry um you know people have uh, laid off workers and you you're not buying those stocks or you are buying stocks that are showing promise with real estate, you have an actual house, you have an actual building, you have actual land. You always have a stable asset that you um, that 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 you hold. So I don't see the volatility. Uh, obviously, um, 
the volatility to be as, as extreme. On the other hand, I do think that in the times of, of slowdown or a pandemic, you are going to see more asset, uh, assets being sold, and that's because people need the cash. And, and they should have that option. Now, if they sell, uh, obviously, you're going to see uh, people buying and replacing and, and you know, financing otherwise um, uh, the property. So that's a good thing. Now, of course, um, you're going you're gonna to see properties undervalued, but you, you're going to see that anyway in the real estate market in the time of the pandemic. All right, let me see. If there's somebody here whose questions I did not answer, I will answer them privately. So, so Obi is asking if we're preparing the PPM, and, and yes, we do repair the PPM in white paper, or we work with lawyers that do. And I have some final questions here. Send me an example of the project. I shall do that. Uh, how long did this process take with St. Regis? It took four months. And I think that will conclude our session, guys. Thank you so much again. Write me email. Write me an email at l at solidblock.co. Um, Ken is asking, how do I find the Cointelligence course? You can find it on the website. Um, I think that they're, they're still putting that on the website, but you can see the, um, the link at uh, uh, tokenization101.co or the link that was here in the deck. And I will email you guys, I will email you all, all the information. Everybody who attended today will receive the information. Actually, before you guys go, almost forgot, I'm going to have a poll here that you guys can, uh, I would really appreciate if you could answer that. Um, uh, if you can answer a quick question about how I did today, really, really important to me. And if this stuff is interesting to you and Quentin, thank you for your comment today. Thank you for com your comments, everybody. I am switching on the poll and hope you guys can answer and I'll be in touch with you very soon. Thank you so much.